Welcome back, everybody. My name is Sailor Martin. This is the best MEDC, and today I want to show you my updated everyday carry. About every three months, give or take, I do a video on my EDC update, and I think to date, this is probably the biggest one ever. Um, typically, I'm just kind of upgrading this and upgrading that, and it's, you know, mostly the same stuff. I like to carry as much of the same stuff as I can because I, I have things that I really, truly enjoy. But this time, since the last update, I've gotten pretty deep, far too deep into watches. I've picked up several of my Grail knives. I've upgraded my phone, which is the first time in, in two plus years. Lots and lots of changes. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. I, I think I'm just gonna cut through some of the things that haven't really changed very, very quickly. This. Uh, I tend to leave out a lot of photos because it just stays in my pocket. I tend to forget about it, but it's there when I need it. That is the Victorinox Mini Champ Alux. Uh, it's just one of my favorite Swiss Army knives. It's tiny. It is the size of a classic SD, but a few more layers, and it just has a ton of tools in it. I've talked about this thing a ton. It's just something that just it stays in my fifth pocket, never changes, uh, unless I switch it out for a Victorinox Executive, but it's usually this. Another constant goes everywhere with me, Apple AirPods. I'm pretty sure I had these in the last EDC update video. No changes there. I love them. I use them every single day. They're just a massive, massive help for phone calls, listening to music, whatever I may be doing. These things are a constant as well. The only other thing that is the same is the handkerchief. I do swap out hanks. I have a bunch of them now. Uh, this is mine that I did a, a little sprint run of with Mighty Hanks. I am gonna bring these back. I'm gonna do a different version of them, but I am gonna bring back just a few of these. I use it for wiping lenses, wiping sunglasses, cleaning things off, and uh, I don't really use it for blowing my nose or anything. So it's not a standard Hank, it's, it's a microfiber on the back, which makes it very, very handy for camera lenses, sunglasses, and just wiping things down the screen on my phone or iPad if it gets really mucked up. That's what stays in my back left pocket. So with those things out of the way, everything else is brand new. And we're gonna start with the phone. I purchased the iPhone 10 right when it came out. I had had my phone at the time for quite a while and I decided it was finally time to upgrade. And both my phone and Alex's phones were really just starting to bite the dust. Mine was freezing, battery wasn't lasting all day. And I decided it was finally time to upgrade. So I went with the iPhone 11 Pro Max in the green color, 256 gigabytes, and I opted for the Apple leather case. Pretty standard stuff. It's it's like the exact same phone with a better camera and better battery life. And uh, that's, that's really about all I have to say about it. An iPhone is an iPhone is an iPhone, but the camera on this thing is really, really great. The wallet has changed a lot since the last EDC update. I've been going more and more and more minimal. I started with the Travax Summit wallet. I still use that from time to time. I just like the Summit wallet a ton. It's just a slim, lightweight metal wallet. And then from that, I went to several different wallets. I'm gonna do a video on my favorite minimalist EDC wallets, but the one I've probably carried the most period in my entire life is the Dasa Van Amer gun deck wallet. And this is one of the few ones that has pulled me away from that. This comes from Turkey Foot Leatherworks or Ty Higginbotham over in the Discord server. Um, I actually had him make this one custom for me because I liked the green that he was using in his wallets and I liked this cognac leather. And he made this specifically for me. It's his Bobcat wallet and uh, just having something made for me specifically like colors requested and whatnot. It just kind of adds some personality to the wallet, makes it a little more sentimental. And uh, I just like it. It's very, very minimal. You've got a main pocket in the center here for my cards, the most quickly accessed card on the outside. And I have a pocket here on the back that I could use for cash or for like my license. But uh, this is the way I like to carry it. Apple card, cause I can grab that quickly. But uh, more and more I've been using Apple Pay so I don't have to grab my wallet. But I like to keep it slim and minimal. I have six cards I think in here, six or seven. But that's it, that's the wallet. I will be doing a video on my favorite minimalist EDC wallets, mostly leather wallets in the very near future. I've never really carried challenge coins, but this one I saw pop up on Urban EDC Supply and it's from a company I'm familiar with and that is Shire Post Mint. They do a lot of coins. They have a moon coin, which looks really, really cool. I've never been super into challenge coins. I've carried some coins, but for no particular reason. This one has actually served a really great function. When I saw it, I knew I had to get it. On the one side, it says one more episode. And on the flip side, it says go to bed. And that is something I think everybody can relate with, especially now 
that uh, some of you are quarantined. I'm about to self-quarantine, and I will be hooked on something. I'm looking for shows, so if you have something that you want me to watch or think I should watch, give me some suggestions down below. I've watched a ton of things. I'll probably just start tearing through books if I get too bored with watching stuff, but go to bed, one more episode. That applies to so many more things than just Netflix binging. If I'm playing Rocket League, I can flip this if I'm not sure if I should play another. Usually I shouldn't. Read one more chapter in the book, eat one more chip. You know, it can apply to so many different things. Um, just helps with the old willpower. Yeah, I could do it on my own, but having something that, you know, definitively just makes that decision for you, takes some of the stress out of that. And, you know, I know I shouldn't be doing something if I flip the coin and it says go to bed. Stop doing what I'm doing. So I mentioned that I've been getting into watches, which I'm not super proud of. And I'm not going to go through the watches that are rotate between because lately, honestly, this has been what's on my wrist. And uh, almost every single day, this thing is on my wrist. And this is the Laurier Gemini. This dropped a few weeks ago. I picked it up. They sold out almost instantly. Um, and it's for good reason. It's a ridiculous value in this watch. This is a hand wine chronograph. And typically those are much more expensive than $500. That's what this one costs. You guys know I've been talking about wanting a, an Omega Speedmaster. This is not a Speedmaster, obviously, but this is probably the next best thing. Now, typically I prefer something a little larger. This is, I think, a 38 or 39 millimeter. And typically I prefer something between 40 and 44 millimeters. I have almost an eight inch wrist but I don't feel that this one's too terribly small. It's smaller than I prefer, for sure, but I have gotten used to the size. I love pretty much everything about this watch. I like how it looks on my wrist, other than it being a little small. I love the coin edge on the bezel. I love that it has a two-step bezel, so there, it's not 60 clicks, I don't believe, uh, but it's 24 clicks, and it's bi-directional. You have your pushers, which have, are very tactile, and it's hand wind. It's a manual chronograph, uh, the Lumon is great. Everything about this watch is great. The only two things I wish that I could change about this watch, I wish it were a little bigger and I wish I had a date window. That's it. I, I don't mind that it's manual instead of automatic. I actually have really grown to like that. I wake up every day and wind it and it's just kind of a ritual. I really, really like this watch. Oh, and one more thing. Um, this is not a sapphire crystal, which most people would expect. It's actually acrylic. So it can be repolished. If it scratches up, you can polish it or you can leave it and it'll look very vintage. I love what they've done with this. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what Laurier does in the future. But this, this has some serious staying power on the wrist. And as for my other watches, I'm going to do a watch collection video very, very soon. Let's get down to business. This is a brand new product as well, at least to me. And this is the Vero Engineering Fulcrum. And I have swapped out pry bars a ton. I actually picked up a, uh, a Zach Wood APB-1, but this took its place for a couple of reasons. I prefer a, a stainless steel or a tool steel pry bar just because it's a little tougher than titanium. Titanium mars up very easily, but honestly, I don't care because this thing is brilliant. You notice that it has the two micro bits here. I've got a T8 and a T6 in here, which is perfect for most of the knives that I might carry every day. But if you take one of these bits out, typically you'd have like a little cutout right here and put your bit in it and you have to kind of wrench on it. It's not really a driver, it's more of a wrench. However, this one, hidden right there in the very end of it, it has a driver with a magnetic retention, brilliant design. You can put whatever bits are most important to you in here. I do wish that there was a cutout on the back side rather than having this Vero branding. I wish that there was a cutout very similar to this one here and you could store four bits. I think that's a possibility. I think it's something he could do in the future, but there you have it, the Vero Engineering Fulcrum, really, really cool item. These are actually, I think, still in stock on Vero's website. It'll be linked down below. So one of the things that I do rotate out other than my watch and my knife is the pen, and it is pretty much always between these two. This is the big Idea Design TI Click EDC. This is actually one that I customized for carry commission. I have the Blurple Topo clip as well as a bronzed anno, and I flamed the grip on mine. So this one's custom to me. Nobody else is quite like this one, but um, I did sell a few of these. I love this pen. This is one of my favorite pens of all time. You can put just about any refill in it, and it just, it's great. But I have to be completely honest with you guys. I think my favorite EDC pen, hands down, is the Bolt Action Mini from Tactile Turn. I love how small and compact this thing is. Uh, I want to do some finish work on it, customize it a little bit, like my other Tactile Turn, the titanium one that I customized. This one, I just love the size of it, and I love the Pilot G2 Mini refills. They're just kind of a pain to replace, but still... 
I love the size of this pen. I love the action. It's very fidgety. I love them both. I swap back and forth between them, but if I had to choose one just for everyday carry and not thinking about the future or anything, it'd probably be the Bolt Action Mini from Tactile Turn, just because it's super fidgety, very small, and I just love this pen. If I had to choose one for the indefinite future or forever, it would probably be the TI Click EDC, mainly because this takes so many refills and I have no idea what Pilot's gonna do with the G2 Mini. You have to buy actual packs of Pilot G2 Minis and throw away the pins to refill this thing. So uh, I would much rather have something that I could put a ton of refills in, but I have the option of carrying both. So I just swap between them and that's the pin situation. So I've gone through a lot of different flashlights over the last year, two years. And uh, one of the favorites has always been the Olay S1R Baton 2, especially this winter edition. This is by far the best Olight that Olight has made in the last several years. It's just a really great light and they added a warm emitter in this thing. I wish they would use more warm emitters or let you choose. <laughs> I mean, just let you choose a 4000K flashlight rather than everything being cool white. Other than this one, I don't really carry too many Olights right now. I did carry Baton Pro just cause it's a beast of a flashlight. And I, I carried this one a ton. As you can tell, it's got a lot of use marks on it. But I ended up moving away from this thing just because it's a little chubby in the pocket. It's about a one inch diameter, maybe just under one inch. So I stopped carrying it as much because I got the uh, Prometheus Beta QRV2. Both of these I got at Blade Show, but I did not give this thing a fair shake right off the bat because I'm not a huge fan of AAA flashlights, or I wasn't at least. This really grew on me because it's got a beautiful beam. It's very, very small and compact, especially after adding the pocket clip. Love this flashlight. I actually fell in love with this flashlight. The problem that I have with it is just that it doesn't have quite enough oomph. But one of my most recent acquisitions is my new EDC flashlight, and it's gonna be very, very difficult to get this thing out of my pocket. This is the Okluma DC0. This is their new 14500 flashlight. So inside this, you have a rechargeable 14500 cell, which is very similar to a double A cell. Very warm, very beautiful beam. Uh, there's very little to dislike about this flashlight, except for some people may have problems with the forward clicky switch. I, I really don't. It's very just basic to use. You cycle through the three modes uh, by half pressing, and then you select your mode and fully depress for constant on, and that's literally all there is to it. It's made of titanium. Two things about this flashlight that you probably want or need to know, pretty much impossible to buy right now unless you find one on secondary. Uh, they're, they're not on the Okluma website. They've removed them. They're trying to catch up and release them again, uh, but also it's $450. So uh, we'll talk more about the Okluma in a future video, but that is what's in my pocket right now. If you want something very similar that you can buy, Right now, they're they're different, but it's a very similar option that is much cheaper, and that is the Raylight Land Titanium. This runs about $80, $90. They're actually on uh, mass drop for another day or so for $69. So if you want to save some money, you can get a titanium flashlight that has most of the same features as the Okluma. I don't like the beam nearly as much. It does have a glow ring, which is really neat. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, and it has opposite it has uh, reverse clicky instead of forward so you click it on and then select your mode rather than select your mode and then click it on so they're opposites both of these take 14 500 cells and this one will actually also take a double a cell so if you want to use a double a or if the 14 500 dies on you you can throw a double a in here and it'll work so really great option as well but i'm carrying the dc zero because it's just a badass flashlight i almost forgot I almost forgot to include my keys. You guys know I hate keys. I just do. Um, I talked about this recently in my last video. This is my key shackle for the keys that I use every single day. Just click and watch that video if you wanna see what this is all about. I also have a Tech Accessories M Bright Glow Fob on here just so I can find it in the dark. Uh, let me charge this thing up real quick so you can see it. This thing glows super bright. It's just a really cool glow in the dark fob. So if you do happen to drop your keys or can't find your keys in the dark, that helps. I have this attached to my main split ring with a titanium carabiner. And the reason most things on here are brass or titanium is because I have these uh, magnetic quick releases from Urban Carvers. These are also a constant. I do not go without these, uh, but I have this on here. And if you have a bunch of metal stuff, it will stick to it just like these tweezers. Uh, they stick to them. So you want something that is non-ferrous. So I have titanium carabiners and titanium split rings and a brass shackle. So nothing really sticks to the magnets. The only thing that does are these tweezers. These are Uncle Bill's silver gripper and you just 
pinch to remove them and you can use them as tweezers and then put them back in the little holder and clip it back on your keys. But that's the key situation. I don't love it. Uh, it's just the least bad it's ever been. All right, I guess it's time to finally talk about what you guys wanted to see, and that is the knife. This is a grail of mine. I've wanted a Shirogorov since I first saw them. Uh, I just kind of put it on the back burner and forgot about it because I didn't want to have to spend the money for it, but uh, an opportunity to buy one came up recently. I sold off several knives and purchased this thing on a whim, and I do not regret it in the least. I, after I saw Rick's last time I went to a shop, I just, I don't know, I got bit by the bug and I had to have it. So here we are. This is the Shirogorov F95RT in blue titanium. I love it. Uh, there's not much bad to say about this knife. In fact, I don't think I have a negative thing to say about the knife. It's just perfection. The action's great. No blade play. Excellent lockup. Love the pocket clip. It's very, very comfortable in the hand. Very slicey with actually a very thick stock, which you wouldn't expect. It's so smooth. It's just... So smooth. If, if I were to say one negative thing about the Shirogorov, it's the proprietary screws. Um, they're a bit of a pain in the ass to use and work with, but uh, it's possible without specialized tools. They do sell a tool for it. You can also buy bit kits from, uh, I can't remember the website. I'll have to link it down below. I absolutely love this knife. Is it worth what I paid? Yeah, because I bought a bunch of other knives and I wasn't using them and sold them and, you know, it doesn't feel like I paid what I paid. Would I buy one new? Uh, I don't know that I would pay $1,050 plus tax and shipping for this. Uh, it's great, but it cuts just as well as all my other knives. You know, like, it's still just a knife, but it, it's more of appreciating the precision, the milling, the art behind this thing. This thing is a, a master of precision and uh, I really, really love this thing. Probably won't sell this ever. Uh, it's it's a forever knife. I also bought another Grail recently, and this is another forever knife. Uh, I think in another video I talked about the Hinderer. Actually, yeah, in my knife maintenance video, I disassembled a Hinderer XM18 Vintage, but that was the 3-inch version. This is the 3.5-inch version. I sold the 3-inch because it was just a little too small. Honestly, I think if I had to choose between this or the Shirogorov, as much as I like the Shirogorov and as nice as it is, even nicer than this, I would probably go with the Hinderer just because the warranty and it feels more like a tool in the hand rather than just a piece of art. This thing feels like an actual hard use knife. I wasn't really much of a fan of the Hinderers, especially the XM18s before I got my hands on the Vintage. The Vintage was sold me with the wood scale, the walnut scale, and the green uh, battle green, I think is what it's called. I love this combination. It's one of my favorite knives of all time. And, uh, this is also a forever knife, but like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of Hinderer before I got my hands on this thing, but now that I have, uh, I'm kind of a huge XM18 fan. So those are the two knives that I carry, you know, I rotate between those two every single day. Most days I've actually been carrying two knives, but the secondary knife that I've been carrying, I can't actually tell you much of anything about it because it's not out yet and I'm sworn to secrecy until it's available. So uh, you guys will know more about what's in this hand later. Sorry to do that to you, but I have another knife in my pocket and I've been carrying it. I'll quickly touch on some of the other knives because I don't carry the same knife every single day. I've been rotating out and uh, I, since my knife collection video, I've gotten so many new things. A second PM2, both of these have Rips Garage Tech scales on them. I have the milled titanium and the reverse hex with his uh, milled clip. I also have a Lynch Northwest clip on this one with his micarta scales and uh, a flitanium backspacer. I think these are the perfect PM2s for me. I'm very happy to have both of these. I also talked about this recently. This is the Vero Engineering Impulse. Just a really, really slick knife. Really great stuff coming out of Vero Engineering. And I will actually talk more about Vero in a future video once the Synapse comes out. I will have a few of his products and I'll talk about him in more depth. But both of these have just kind of been in a slight rotation. And then I got this cool tool roll or knife roll from Arc Company. So Mark sent this to me. It was a little bit of a surprise. A very, very cool tool roll or knife roll. And in here, I just carry some knives with me. And sometimes I'll just throw one in the pocket. I have a Giant Mouse, Ace Biblio, and the Natural Micarta, the Berg Blades Pup. I don't carry this one enough. I freaking love this knife. Uh, the Pena X-Series Front Flipper Trapper. You guys know this ends up in my pocket a lot. Uh, and then I don't really carry these a ton, but recently I've had the Arcform Slim Foot Auto 
in my pocket from ProTech. So Blade HQ hooked me up with this one. And uh, this is actually a really killer auto knife. It's not fast, but look at, let me just get this out of the way. Look at the blade to handle ratio of this. If you push the button and start to close, look how much blade there is to handle. It's the same size as the handle. In fact, as you come past the corner of the handle, the blade extends past the end of the handle and just kind of barely swoops back in. It's nuts. Yeah, just a, a really clever design. Fits really great in the hand and uh, yeah, had no complaints out of this. It's got that beautiful, beautiful ProTech deep carry clip, which is probably one of the best deep carry clips because everything's flush underneath the clip. There's actually a hole milled for the clip. The screws are flush with that and nothing sticks out underneath this. It's just a, a really great clip. I, I'm, I'm really digging this. I'm not a, still not a huge fan of autos, but I'm really digging the slim foot auto. I love the sheep's foot, or I think this is a sheep's foot or a reverse tanto, whatever they want to call this blade shape these days. Uh, I'm really digging the blade, the blade shape, and the knife in general. Uh, for an auto, a lot of them are very threatening, I guess, when you push a button and it flies open. Of all the autos I've ever had, this is probably the least threatening. And part of part of that has to do with it not just flying open. I have a couple of other protects that, that like whack. Hold on. It's better for me to just show you than to talk about it. I have the Protec SBR here, and I'm just going to show you side by side. If I try to release these at the same time, it's kind of tough to do, but if I try to release these at the same time, you, you can see and hear the difference. This one's just slower. This one's snappy. And then I also have the SMG operator, and this one really flies out and kicks hard. And, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just the appearance, the shape of it. I just feel like it's a less aggressive auto and a great everyday carry knife. But yeah, for now, it's gonna be very difficult to get either of these knives out of my pocket full time. Uh, I keep just going back and forth between these two and uh, it's hard it's hard to carry any of these others. I, I love them, they're all great knives, I really appreciate them, but these two are by far, very wide margin, my favorite knives. That's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you wanna purchase anything you saw in this video or see more about it, everything is linked down below, including anything I may have talked about. If you purchase anything using those links, it is an affiliate link most of the time, which means that I get a little bit of a kickback, but it won't cost you anything extra. And, and just, I wanna say quickly that uh, that's a big, big help. It's mainly what supports this channel, but also, especially now during all of this coronavirus craziness. Um, I'm not going to be working as much. I'm going to be spending some more time at home and just not leaving the house and self-quarantining. And uh, because of that, I won't be able to make as many videos. So clicking those links absolutely helps. And watching videos, uh, rewatch some old ones if you feel like it, no pressure. You can also support by going to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc, or you can go to carrycommission.com or carry.best. That is my store. You can buy gear and merch directly from me. Be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at bestmedc. There's now a Facebook group, which you can request to join, as well as a Discord server. I highly recommend you follow or join all those places. But with that said, and until next time, carry on.